Hey guys, it's Monday. This is the first clip that I'm filming for this vlog. So reading update, I'm cheating a little bit. I have already started my November TBR and here's why. I finished the book that I was reading, Shiver by Allie Reynolds. I finished it on Friday and I didn't have anything on deck to read afterwards. And I didn't want to potentially start something that I wasn't going to be able to finish by November 1st. So I made the decision to go ahead and start my November TBR. I started The Dilemma by B.A. Paris on Friday and this is the book to satisfy the lowest rated on my TBR. And I was very nervous going into it. I have read three other books by B.A. Paris. I really enjoyed Behind Closed Doors. I also enjoyed The Breakdown. Didn't like Bring Me Back hardly at all. And so I was nervous about reading The Dilemma, especially after reading some of the comments. However, I'm going to finish this today and I'm actually really enjoying it. One of the main complaints I hear about it is that it's more of a family drama than anything and a lot of people are going into this expecting a suspense thriller. And I can totally see that. I can see why that there's that complaint. But I think if you know it's a family drama going into it, you're less likely to be disappointed and you're more likely to enjoy the ride. Let me back up for a second. This story follows a married couple, Adam and Olivia, and it is Olivia's 40th birthday. And she has been planning literally for two decades this blowout birthday bash for her 40th birthday. And you kind of find out as you're reading why this birthday is so important to her, why she has spent so much time, energy, and money in planning it. There are reasons. And so this whole book is taking place on the day and night of the party. And so the one catch for Olivia is the fact that her daughter Marnie, who is studying abroad in Hong Kong, is not going to be there. And while everybody thinks she's super disappointed that Marnie's not going to be there, she's actually really relieved because she has found out a pretty disturbing secret about her daughter and she hasn't told her husband about it. And she wants an opportunity to tell her husband before her daughter arrives back to live with them. But what she doesn't know is that her husband Adam has arranged for Marnie to come home as a surprise to be there for her mother's 40th birthday party. But on the day of the party, Adam gets some tragic news of his own that he has to deal with. And he doesn't want to tell his wife because he wants his wife to have this perfect party that she has been dreaming up and planning for so long. So both Adam and Olivia are hiding secrets from each other. And some of the other feedback I was hearing about this book is that they didn't like that there was so much miscommunication. And that also made me nervous going into this. However, I don't necessarily think miscommunication fits. They're not miscommunicating. They are deliberately keeping secrets from each other. And they both have somewhat valid reasons for doing it. I don't necessarily agree, but I can understand. And I don't necessarily know if I would have done anything differently. And so it's not bothering me as much as I thought it would. I personally enjoy a family drama if it's done well. And so far I find that this is done pretty well. I love a good character driven story and that's really what this is. And I find that this book is really about being tense and not in suspense. And I feel like if you know that going in, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to be able to enjoy the ride. I'm enjoying this way more than I thought I would. I'm definitely enjoying this more than Bring Me Back. It definitely has the potential to be a stronger book than I was originally expecting it to be. I have also gone ahead and started Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I am starting this with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. This is something that I'm reading physically and so I wanted to get a jump on it because I read books physically so slowly. In terms of what I'm going to be reading after the dilemma, I don't know what I'm going to read. That's my own dilemma. But for now, I have to go ahead and get back to work. I'll check in with you a little bit later. Hey y'all, it is Thursday morning. I know it has been a minute since my last update, but I did wanna go ahead and just pop on and give you some reading updates because I did finish The Dilemma by B.A. Paris since my last update and my thoughts and feelings haven't really changed since I posted my first update about it. I actually thought that it was a pretty solid, well done family drama and it's more about you being tense through the whole time that you're reading it because you're just waiting for these secrets to be revealed and the repercussions of those secrets than it is about being like a suspense thriller. And if you have the correct expectations, then you're actually going to really be able to enjoy it so long as this is the the type of story that you enjoy. But if you go in thinking it's going to be like a suspense thriller, you would definitely be disappointed. So I gave this a 3.5, but I rounded it up to four stars. I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would, especially after seeing the low rating, reading the comments, seeing the feedback. I was pleasantly surprised by it. And I will definitely be continuing with BA Paris in the future with some of her books. I have also started and finished Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. And this was just
just such a touching, heartwarming, charming story. It's primarily following Tova Sullivan. She is an older woman. I believe she's about 70 years old at the start of the story. And she has had her fair share of grief in her life. Her son, when he was just 18, which was about 30 years ago by the point of this story, had disappeared mysteriously from a boat in the Puget Sound. And nobody really knows what happened to him. The police said that he committed suicide, but Tova just never believed that. Tova believes it was likely an accident of some sort, but she never really knew. So she never really got closure on that front. And her longtime husband, probably of the past 40 or so years, recently passed away of cancer. And so she is now on her own. And to keep herself busy, at night, she actually cleans the local aquarium. And during her time cleaning the aquarium, she makes friends with Marcellus, who is a giant Pacific octopus, a very clever creature who often escapes his tank. And Toba will find him like wandering the aquarium and they kind of start forming this bond. And I would say that's really the foundation of the story, but oddly enough, that doesn't take up a whole lot of this book, which I would say is probably my main criticism or complaint because you do get Marcellus's perspective but it's not nearly as much as I thought it was going to be and I'm disappointed by that. Marcellus was a fantastic character and I think if you read this book and he doesn't instantly become one of your favorite bookish characters you've read this book wrong because he was just fantastic. I loved reading from his perspective and his observations about humanity as he witnesses them from his tank but I really thought that there was going to be more of his perspective and more of his interactions with Tova because that's really what the premise of the whole book seemed to center around but overall I feel like it ended up being a very small part of this story. You definitely do follow Tova outside of the aquarium and in her life and everything that is happening as she's trying to adjust to life on her own now as she's getting older with no real family and things of that nature. But there's also another storyline in here, one that I wasn't really prepared for or expecting. And it actually takes up a good deal of the story. Now, obviously there is a point and purpose for this. It all comes together in the end, but you're not just following Tova. You are following a young man named Cameron. And I don't really want to go too much into his storyline or how he fits into the story, because I feel like if you just go into it and take the journey that you're not really going to be disappointed. It is so very sweet and touching how Cam's story intertwines with Tova's and how it all ends up. And overall, I very much enjoyed my reading experience. I would have liked to just see more of Marcellus and I would have liked to see more of his relationship with Tova. So that's really my only criticism of the story is just that I was expecting this to be almost entirely focused on Tova and the octopus, but it's not really. Marcellus overall just really feels like a side character rather than a main character. The main characters are really Tova and Cam. So overall, like I said, a very charming story, a very sweet story. It will warm your cold dead heart if you have one like mine. I did get a little bit teary because it's just one of those happy feel good stories. It really is. So highly recommend if you are interested in this story, definitely recommend picking it up. So this morning I decided to go ahead and start The Shadows by Alex North. I've only listened to a little bit of it so far. I just listened to it on my commute to work this morning. So I don't really have a full grasp of what it is about or if I'm going to enjoy the story or anything of that nature. I'll be sure to give you an update once I actually have more information to share. I did have a lot of books come in the mail that I want to share with you later as well as some Funko Pop. So hopefully later I can get myself together to do a haul for y'all and possibly provide more of an update on The Shadows. But for now, I am very late going into work. There has been a lot of traffic recently because they are working on repairing this old railroad tracks on one of the main stretches in town and so that means traffic is a nightmare so I got to work late and I decided to go ahead and update you anyway so I'll touch base with y'all later Hey y'all, so it is Saturday morning. I attempted to film that book haul Funko Pop haul for you on Thursday night, the same day that I told you I had the haul to film, but the lighting was so awful. I couldn't even do anything about it in editing. And so I wanted to wait until I had a better lighting situation, but of course it's Saturday morning and it's super overcasty outside. So I'm just gonna have to roll with it. So I apologize if the lighting is absolutely terrible. I lost my picture lights, not, not lost, but like they crapped out on me, they both broke and now I'm really at the mercy of natural lighting and overhead lighting and overhead lighting is never a great option to rely on. So we're going to work with what we have. And like I said, I really apologize if the lighting is terrible, but I did want to go ahead and show you some of the things that have come in the mail because it's a growing pile. And the longer that I wait, the longer it's going to take. 
So let's go ahead and first get into the Funko Pops and then we'll go into the books. And also as per usual, the ring light is gonna make it very difficult for you to see the pops. So I'm gonna do my best to show it to you with the ring light. Okay, so first we have Albus Dumbledore with Hogwarts. Um, I don't know if you can see, but he's standing right there next to the castle. It's a definitely a bigger pop. It is part of the Funko Pop Towns collection. So it's not actually considered part of the Harry Potter pop collection. Then part of the Funko Pop Rides collection, you have Ron Weasley in the flying car, which I absolutely love. I'm actually really surprised that they haven't made this up until now. So I'm really glad to have this one for my collection. Then I have two standard size pops that were part of the New York Comic Con Funko Pop exclusives. Now, obviously I didn't go to New York Comic Con. However, they typically have shared retailers where they send these Funko Pops and that's where I was able to get them. So first we have Harry Potter from the Chamber of Secrets. He actually has right here the little basilisk thing. And then if I swip him a little, you can see that he has the sword of Gryffindor right here. And then my favorite is actually Neville Longbottom with the pixies. He's got the little pixie right there and they're holding him by the ears. How cute is that? I love this one so much. So those are the four recent Funko Pops that have come in the mail. Now let's go ahead and get to all of these books. So these first three books are actually books that I have talked about in recent wrap ups and I will try to remember to link them up in the cards if you might be interested in hearing more in depth thoughts about them. I'll give you like a brief synopsis about what they're about but I'm not going to really go too in depth into my feelings or anything like that. First we have All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. This is a debut novel by Ashley Flowers who is the host of a true crime podcast called True Crime Junkies and I was excited to see what she would do with this. This essentially follows our main character Margot Davies who is having to return to her hometown to care for her ailing uncle. This is a town that has been haunted for probably the past 25-30 years by the disappearance of a six-year-old dancing queen basically. So when she was just six years old January Jacobs basically disappeared for from her home and was later found dead and she was a friend of Margot Davies and now Margot Davies is returning to this hometown where it has continued to be haunted by January Jacobs death and then suddenly another little girl girl goes missing in January is determined to find out what happened to her and she believes that there is a connection between the two. So you're following Margot Davies and the present as she is investigating the recent disappearance and you're also following the past timeline immediately after January Jacobs goes missing and you're following the perspective of January Jacobs mother. I actually really enjoyed this. It was a solid reading experience overall. Was it mind-blowing? No. Were some of the twists pretty predictable? Yes. But I thought Ashley did a really great job of weaving the story. She definitely did toss a lot of red herrings out at you that she wanted you to follow and you know they would all lead to a dead end until you got to the truth of the matter. This also definitely had an open ending. Some people might not really appreciate that, but it didn't really bother me. And I will absolutely be willing to read more from Ashley Flowers in the future. Next, I have A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. This is a wintry isolation thriller that follows Dr. Alex Carter, who is a wildlife biologist. She's being sent to the rural Montana mountains to study wolverines on this nature preserve. She's going to be out there basically all alone all winter in like this abandoned ski resort lodge. And the land that the lodge is on is now that nature preserve. But when she gets to the town, she finds that she's not really welcomed by the locals. The locals seem to have other plans for that land and so she's not wanted and then sinister things start to happen on the nature preserve but she's there she's gonna stick it out she's gonna do her job until something comes for her and it is a fight for her survival. I enjoy this one immensely. I thought this gave you all of the great vibes that you want from an isolation thriller. I was definitely on the edge of my seat for the last couple of hours when I was listening to this book. It was very high stakes for me and got my heart pounding. I just wanted to know what happened and I feel like that's a trademark of a great thriller. I also loved the added educational bonuses you are finding about Wolf Wolverines and Nature Conservancy in general. So highly recommend this one. Another isolation thriller I have here is Shiver by Ellie Reynolds. This is set between two timelines 10 years ago and the present and 10 years ago you're following a group of friends who all meet at this snowboarding competition. They are basically there for several weeks training, hanging out, getting to know one another until something tragic happens to one of them. Now they all go their separate ways. They haven't talked to each other in 10 years until suddenly they are all invited to a reunion at the same ski resort where all of this stuff went down. They're going there preseason, so there's really not going to be any skiers or snowboarders there and there's not even any staff when they arrive. They think that they're all getting together to just reminisce and catch up. But what they quickly find out is that there is somebody there who has other plans for them. Somebody who is actually messing with them and says that one of them had something to do with the disappearance of the person that went missing six years ago. So again, you're following past and present timelines. You're following this group of people in the present as they don't know who to trust. They don't know if one of them is behind all of this. So they're really just isolated, not sure what to do. And of course, they all have secrets that are uncovered through the reading of this. 
Again, I thought that this was really solid. I like the direction that Ellie Reynolds took with this. It wasn't necessarily shocking or unpredictable, but I thought it was pretty good. And so I wanted to have a copy for my shelves because this is another one that I would recommend for this type of wintry, chilly isolation thriller type vibe. These next five books are all holiday related, probably romance type books. I am collecting these books at this time for some videos that I plan to do in December. So I don't know a whole heck of a lot about these. I'm just going to go through them one by one. And as I continue to get them in the mail, I will keep you updated. First, I have the 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless. The tagline at the top says, one woman, 12 Mr. Wrights, what could possibly go wrong? This kind of sounds like 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston, which I read not last Christmas, I believe, but the Christmas before. And I really enjoyed this. Sounds like the adult version of that. So I felt like this would be right up my alley for the books that I am seeking for the Christmas season. Next, I have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. I've actually only read one Tessa Bailey. It is the duology, the It Happened One Summer duology. I read the first book in that and I actually really enjoyed that. So when I saw that she had a holiday romance coming out, I wanted to go ahead and pick this up. Like I said, I don't really know much about this other than it is going to be a romance. It is very, very small. It is under 250 pages. So I imagine it's going to be a very light and quick read, but hopefully it gives me some swoony feels. Then I have One Last Gift by Emily Stone. All I really know about this is I feel like it deals with grief and harder hitting elements. Now that might not exactly scream festive Christmas to you, but I do feel like it's going to be very touching, very heartwarming. And I do think that those are the vibes that I'm going for for Christmas. So I really wanted to give it a shot. I'm always down for those harder hitting elements in books and I really want to see what Emily Stone does with this story. Once Upon a December by Amy E. Reichert. I've actually read one other Amy E. Reichert. It was The Simplicity of Cider and it was an okay story, nothing mind-blowing. I did unhaul it and didn't really plan on continuing with Amy E. Reichert in the future, but this is a cute holiday romance and I do believe it actually contains some magical elements. So there is actually going to be some Christmas magic in here, which I am excited to get to. And then last, In the Holidays by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is a very hit or miss duo for me. I have hated some of their books, have been meh on some of their books and have really enjoyed some of their books. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue reading them as an author because if nothing else, they for the most part are a good time. And so since they do have a holiday book out, I absolutely wanted to go ahead and read this. My understanding is that this does feature the Groundhog Day trope, which is not my favorite. There is just something about that trope that I find very cringy and anxious. Like I'm very anxious about it. I can't explain what it is, but I'm going to go ahead and definitely give it a shot because it is an author I know. It is a holiday. I don't know if it is a romance, but typically all of their books are. So I'm going to assume it is. So I'm excited to go ahead and give this a try. Okay, that is it. Those are all the books that have currently come my way in the past week or two. Like I said, there are definitely more on the way and I will be doing a super big book haul, but I wanted to go ahead and just share all this with you in the vlog in terms of reading updates and plans for the day. So we are going to be home until about three and then we are heading into New Orleans to go see Carrie Underwood in concert. So I don't have a heck of a lot of time to do anything today. I'm going to get as much chores done as I possibly can, possibly film a video if this lighting is decent enough. I don't know. I'm going to have to pop this in the editor and see if there's anything I can do about it. But in terms of reading, I actually stopped reading The Shadows by Alex North. It wasn't capturing my attention. It wasn't something I was in the mood for. I wasn't particularly interested in what was happening. So I went ahead and picked up Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. This is a very short book. I have less than two hours of listening time left of the audio and it's okay. I thought that I was going to enjoy it a lot more just by the writing style and how engaging I found it, but it's kind of taken this turn that I'm not so invested in. Goodnight Beautiful follows a married couple, Annie and Sam. They have recently moved away from big city New York into a smaller town where Sam grew up because Sam wants to take care of his ailing mother. Sam has a home office and he's very successful. Clients are going in and out all day, but what he doesn't know is that his session are able to be heard from a vent that connects the upstairs rooms with his office. And then one day this mysterious French girl comes, this new client, and coinciding with her arrival is Sam's disappearance. One day Annie wakes up and he is no longer there and nobody knows what happens to him. And so we're following that path trying to figure out what actually happened to Sam. Does this French girl have anything to do with it? Is it Annie? What is actually going on here? And like I said, it's taking kind of this weird turn that I wasn't really expecting and I'm not really jiving with. So I'm going to go ahead and try to finish it today, but I don't know if I can, because like I said, we are going to be gone the majority of the afternoon. And I don't know if I'm really going to have an opportunity to listen to a lot of it. So we'll see. But that is it for this very long update. I'm going to go ahead and possibly try to get ready to film a video and get some tours done. And I will check in with you when I've actually finished. Good night, beautiful. Hey y'all. So it is Saturday. I actually just got done filming a video. And then prior to that is when I did that haul. And wouldn't you know, more books came in the mail after I'd already filmed that clip. So I'm popping on to share because I got one of my book of the month boxes. Yes, I said one. I have two subscriptions because there are often more books that I want that I can't get 
with just one because you're only limited to three. So the very first book that I have is The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. I've read two books by Claire McIntosh previously. The first one I believe was I Let You Go and I really liked that. I enjoyed the twist of that story and I can't remember the name of the title of the other one but both for the most part I enjoyed so I was excited to see this as a book of the month option. Let me go ahead and read to you what it's about. On New Year's Eve, Reese Lloyd has a house full of guests. His vacation homes on Mirror Lake are a success and he's generously invited to the village to drink champagne with their wealthy new neighbors but by midnight Reese will be floating dead in the freezing waters of the lake. On New Year's Day, Fionn Morgan has a village full of suspects. The tiny community is her home, so the suspects are her neighbors, friends, and family, and Fionn has her own secrets to protect. With a lie uncovered at every turn, soon the question isn't who wanted Reese dead, but who finally killed him. In a village with this many secrets, murder is just the beginning. So I'm not entirely sure if you're getting two perspectives or if you're getting two timelines, like maybe you're getting the night of the party leading up to the actual death and then what happens in the investigation afterwards. Like if you are alternating, or maybe if there's a part one, part two, I'm not really sure how this book is going to be told, but there's definitely going to be an investigation aspect to it and I am here for it. I'm here to find out who killed Reese and what happened at that party. Next we have Signal Fires by Danny Shapiro and I believe Danny Shapiro is the host of that podcast called Family Secrets which I have listened to and have really enjoyed in the past and when I was reading the synopsis of this this sounded really beautiful and poignant and it had a lot of really great reviews and so I was really interested in actually reading from Danny Shapiro because I know that she has a book out that is like based on her own life and her own family secrets that have been revealed. This is fiction and so I wanted to see what she did with this story. So this says that Signal Fires opens on a summer night in 1985. Three teenagers have been drinking. One of them gets behind the wheel of a car and in an instant, everything on Division Street changes. Each of their lives and that of Ben Wilf, a doctor who arrives on the scene, is shattered. For the Wilf family, the circumstances of that fatal accident will become the deepest kind of secret, one so dangerous it can never be spoken. I'm not going to really read any more like that. This sounds like it's going to be a beautiful family drama and so I'm here for that drama. It is actually a remarkably short book. It is, oh my gosh, it's under 250 pages. So I'm kind of skeptical about short books like that because I never feel like they can pack the punch that I'm looking for and you can never really connect to the characters in such a short amount of pages but I'm going to give it a shot. Now this next book I picked up because it was actually one of the selections for another bookish subscription that I'm trying and I will be doing an unboxing for you I believe when I get it in December. This is one of the books that I didn't select and so when I saw it as a book of the month pick I wanted to go ahead and get it because it sounded intriguing but not necessarily more intriguing than the book that I did select. When Anne Stilwell arrives in New York City she expects to spend her summer working at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Instead, she finds herself assigned to The Cloisters, a gothic museum and garden renowned for its collection of medieval art and its enigmatic researchers. Patrick Rowland, the charismatic curator specializing in the history of tarot, Rachel Mondre, Patrick's brilliant curatorial associate, and Leo Bitberg, the gardener charged with cultivating the museum's poisonous plants. Eager to escape her troubled past in rural Washington, Anne is happy to indulge the researchers' more outlandish theories, only to find that their fascination with ancient divination runs deeper than academic obsession. Patrick is determined to prove that medieval tarot holds the key to accurately telling the future. When Anne discovers a breakthrough in the form of cryptic deck of 15th century tarot cards, she finds herself at the center of a dangerous game of powers, seduction, and ambition. As their circle reaches its breaking point, Anne must decide if the tarot cards can teach her not only about the past, but also about her future. So it sounds like there's going to be magical elements to this tarot, divination, telling the future, things of that nature. It sounds very atmospheric, almost like it might have some dark academia vibes to it, and I'm excited to give it a chance. And then finally, I have another Christmas book. It is The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. So from what I understand, this is set in Scotland and it follows our main character, Suzanne, who really wants all three of her adopted daughters to come home and they are all headed her way, but each daughter is very individual. They are different. Um, it sounds like there is some tension, maybe some estrangement, and I feel like it's all going to come to a head in this story. So this has definitely got family drama-esque aspects to it and I'm here for it. I am reading the gamut of holiday stories. I want to read those warm, light, fluffy holiday romances. I want to read things that have harder hitting elements and that sounds like what this is going to be about so I'm excited to get into it. Okay for real right now that is it. Those are all the books that I have coming in at the moment. There will definitely be some here in a few days and I have a really big or book outlet order coming that is definitely going to have its own dedicated video and all of these books will be able to be seen in there as well. I really have to go start working on my house chores because like I said we're going to be gone tonight and I'm not going to have an opportunity to do that so I'm going to go ahead and get my butt in gear. Hey y'all, so I just wanted to pop in here really quick and say that the next several minutes of this vlog are going to be footage from the Carrie Underwood concert. But there are going to be a lot of like flashing lights and things like that. If you were unable to watch that or if you just really have no interest in seeing footage from the Carrie Underwood concert, please go ahead and skip ahead to the timestamp that I will leave down below. It was an amazing, an amazing concert. It's probably one of the best concerts that I've ever seen. Carrie Underwood is just remarkably talented, but also that just like the special effects and theatrics of the concert were fantastic. And so that's why I wanted to share as much as possible 
possible with y'all. Now, of course, for copyright reasons, I can't actually include the music, but I did take several clips of just like different lighting and costumes that she was in and some of the things there for your enjoyment. So again, if that doesn't interest you or if you just cannot handle those flashing lights, please go ahead and skip to that time after the clips have ended. <laughs> So I did finish Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. So I wanted to go ahead and come on here and talk about it. I didn't love this. I ended up giving it a three stars. It's a three star that means it's just a very meh read. It's something that I'm absolutely going to forget about. In fact, I've already really started to forget about it. To be honest with you, I don't really want to say more about this book. And the reason is, is because when you read the synopsis on the book flap, it is specifically written in a way to make you believe that the story is about one thing, but it's not. So it's deliberately deceitful. And I don't want to say how it's deceitful. I don't want to say why. And I don't want to say anything about the book either, because I feel like if I do, it's absolutely going to give away the first twist of the story. So I'm just going to say that it kind of went into a weird direction for a while there. And I'm still not entirely sure I understand why or the purpose of it. And I didn't love it didn't really connect to it at all didn't see the overall 
point or purpose. So this was a, a three stars. I'm definitely not going to hang on to this one. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. So this wasn't really all that successful. And I think I mentioned it before that I did go ahead and stop reading The Shadows by Alex North. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I don't think I'm going to read Amy and Rogers' Epic Detour either. I think I'm going to give myself a pass on that one and just go ahead and let it go. As much as I've really enjoyed Morgan Matson in the past, and I may even enjoy these stories if I were to allow myself to get into them, I just don't want to get into them. And I think I just need to go ahead and let myself accept that. Let myself accept that I have enjoyed Morgan Matson in the past and I can keep the stories on my shelves that I've enjoyed by her, but that doesn't mean I need to continue with her as an author or it doesn't mean I need to finish her backlist. Maybe I can keep an eye out for new releases in the future that I might want to read. But for now, I'm just, I'm just going to, to let it go. So I think on November 6th, I've already finished all of my November, official November TBR. Of course, I'm still in the middle of Assassin's Apprentice. I am reading that physically. So I can still definitely read something on audiobook and I will be finishing Assassin's Apprentice for sure. But yeah, other than that, I'm done with my November TBR. Interesting, huh? So for today, I don't know if I'm going to start anything new. If I do, it's going to be towards the afternoon. I have some booktube videos that I want to catch up on and I think I'm just going to let myself do that, not really worry about reading anything right now. I'm just kind of going with the flow. For now, I have to go ahead and start editing videos that I have planned to post this week and of course all the never-ending chores and stuff like that. So I will check in with you later. Hey y'all, um, I'm sitting here in bed and um, oh that... <laughs> This is what Archie does every night when I, as soon as I get into bed, he has to snuggle. Like this is prime snuggle time that I'm interrupting right now with my filming. Um, anyway, so I hope that you can hear me between the cat and his purring, but I wanted to go ahead and come on here and give you an update because it's been a couple of days since I actually gave you an update after the concert and everything like that. I was doing a lot of editing and was just really wanting to get the two videos that I filmed on Sunday ready for upload this week. And I was also editing all of the other footage for the vlog. So it's just been a really editing heavy week. And so I wasn't really concentrating on taking new clips or anything. Archie, I'm covered in hair now because of you. Why are you so handsome? Why are you so handsome? I did want to tell you that I started a new book. I started The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. And I actually decided to start this because I'm going to be doing a secret reading vlog. I say secret like it's some big unique idea, but it's not. It's not at all. And I've been abandoned. Oh my goodness. For mom life. Since I had really already finished my November TBR, I didn't really have anything else planned. I decided now was a good time to go ahead and do this secret TBR. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to be reading three to five books for it. I haven't really decided. I guess it depends on how long it takes. So the first book is going to be The Final Girl Support Group, which I've already started and I actually plan on finishing tomorrow. And I don't really want to say a lot about my feelings for it because I'm going to have a whole vlog style wrap up. I'll just give you a brief synopsis about what it is about. It really is about a support group for for final girls and final girls are basically the lone survivors of massacres and you're usually female obviously. And so our main character is Lynette Tarkington. She is a final girl and she for the past 16 years has been going to the support group with a handful of other final girls and then one day they become targeted like a couple of them are killed and so you're following Lynette as she's trying to figure out what's going on and basically survive. I will say this is not really feedback about the book just the audiobook. I wouldn't recommend the audiobook because they decided to do that thing where they have an older woman. In this instance I think the person doing the narration is in her 60s and she's being the voice for a woman who I believe is in her late 30s, early 40s. And so you can tell the age difference there. And so when I'm listening to an audiobook like this, where the age difference between the narrator and the main character of the book is so pronounced, it really changes the way that I view the character. And I feel in this instance, it also changes the voice of the character almost quite literally, right? Not that the narrator is a bad narrator. It's just, I don't feel like she fits the story. And also she must be speaking really, really slow because I have this on 2.3 times speed. I usually listen at 2.0 speed and I have it on 2.3 times speed because two was too slow and I could probably even bump it up to like 2.5 and be totally fine. So if you don't normally speed up your audiobook narrators, you're definitely going to want to for this one or you're probably not going to be able to stand it at all. So the audiobook is not necessarily the best experience. I will say that, but I'm not really going to go into detail about thoughts and feelings of the book because that's going to be in a separate vlog style wrap. So stay tuned for that. It will be coming out at the end of November, fingers crossed, as long as I could read all the books that I need to read for them. That's really it. And 
terms of the reading update, I did get more bookish mail. So I got a whole nother stack of books that I need to share with you, but they're in my office right now. And my office is right next to my husband's man cave and he is playing a game and Archie is playing with my blinds. So if you hear clackety clacketing, that's what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and hold off to do another little mini haul for you until I think Thursday when I'm actually home by myself because he's got D&D &D that night and so it's going to be like quieter and I'll have some time to myself at night to actually film that haul. I swear to god this vlog is just me unboxing books for you and like five minutes of Carrie Underwood footage. Anyway y'all if you couldn't already tell by the state of affairs here and the lighting it is actually bedtime. We just got done walking the dogs and I now need to like remove my makeup and get into my sleeping clothes and get ready for bed. I just wanted to come on here and give you an update since it's been a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready for bed and I will check in with you later, possibly not until Thursday when I do that haul. Hey y'all, it is Thursday evening. Please forgive the hot mess express that's going on right now. I only got home about an hour and a half ago from work and the gym and hastily making my dinner and situating the animals. But since Robert is gone, he is at D&D &D and I have some extra time tonight. I wanted to go ahead and do that final little book haul that I mentioned earlier and also play with my new picture lights, which I have gone ahead and set up. So all the light that you're seeing right now is just coming from the picture lights and my ring light. My overhead light is off. However, I definitely still need to play around with the lights because the lights came with this remote. Each light came with one of these remotes, but I don't have the batteries for them. So I have to get batteries because I can actually change the temperature of the light. Like I can have warmer light or I can have cooler light and I can change the brightness or I can dim it. So I don't know like what settings is on right now. I just literally plugged it in and this is what I got, but it's definitely giving me warmer feels and that's not really my vibe. I definitely go for like a more bright white space than a yellow tone space. So I am a little bit nervous though because the instructions that they gave for the remote, like that's literally all they sent. They sent one page and it was instructions on how to use the remote, but the instructions don't actually match this remote. Picture of the remote on the instructions is different. So I don't know whether this is like a brand new version of the remote and the instructions are old or I don't know if the instructions go to the newer remote and this is an older remote. I do know that I did watch a YouTube video about this light set and the remote control that they showed in the video matched the instructions. So I have no idea. I'm gonna have to play around with this and figure out what every button does. And if I can get the lights to the settings that I want them to be, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do. Enough rambling, let's go ahead and talk about the other books that I've hauled this month. First, I have Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This was the book that was sent to me as part of Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. This was the November gift that was sent to me. Now, I'm not a big middle grade person. I just don't lean towards it. It's not really what I'm looking for. However, I've heard a lot of amazing things about this series. I've heard that it's very Harry Potter-esque in terms of vibes. Like, it's a very different story from Harry Potter, but when you read it, you get some of that nostalgia that reminds you of reading Harry Potter for the first time. So I'm very intrigued to go ahead and try this. I'm also really intrigued by the Keeper of the Lost City series, which I've heard amazing things about. So I think I'm going to dip my toe into those series and see what I think. And then if I like them, maybe I'd be more willing to try other middle grade series in the future. But those ones in particular have intrigued me. So I was glad to get this one and have it on my shelves and I will dive into it at some point. And similarly to what I said in the earlier haul that I did, these next several are Christmas books that I'm collecting for some videos that I'm going to be doing in December. So I'm not really going to go through the synopses of these books. I know it's walk time. I know. Just let me finish this clip and I promise I'll walk you. Okay, I don't remember what I was saying before that interruption, but these next books are holiday related. Not going to go through the synopses because there will be more information on them in later videos. First, I have Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayliss. So she's actually the same author that did the 12 Dates of Christmas. And when I was looking at that book, this one also popped up and I really liked the sound of this one. So I wanted to go ahead and try this one as well. And who knows, maybe Jenny Bayliss is going to be like a staple holiday author. I think that she has a few more holiday themed books as well. And so that would be really awesome if I had like a reliable holiday author that I wanted to pick up every single year. Then I have A Very Merry Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. So this is actually the fifth book in the bromance series. I definitely have not read the uh, all the other four previous books. I've only read the first one and I did like that and I do plan on continuing. But since these books can be read as standalones, as soon as I saw that there was a holiday addition to this series, I wanted to go ahead and grab it. Next I have The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. This is definitely a different selection to anything else that I have. I heard Audrey from Chapter and Converse talk about this and I had to have this. This sounds like it's going to be fun, possibly festive, and maybe a little bit thrillery. And I mean, if you're not thinking about 
murder at Christmas. Are you even doing Christmas right? Come on. So I am super excited about this one. Then I have A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. Now I believe this follows a plus size adult film star and I think she's asked to star in another Christmas movie that's a little bit more wholesome, possibly like Hallmark S and it's going to be about that journey and possibly her finding love and and so on. The cover of this definitely gives me like young adult vibe but since the main character is an adult film star and knowing that Sierra Simone is a popular author of smut I haven't actually read anything from her but I've heard a lot about her. So this is probably on the more smutty steamier side of Christmas romances and I'm here for it. I haven't had the best experience with Julie Murphy in the past. I've read one book by her and I really really didn't like it so we'll see what I think but I'm definitely willing to give this a try because I read this synopsis and I was smiling. I was like, oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm here for it. And then the last two books are actually the final book of the month books that I received. I do have those two subscriptions. And so these finally came in the mail. First, I have Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I read my very first Alice Feeney a few weeks ago. It was Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I actually enjoyed that. I enjoyed the twist of it. Not necessarily the entirety of my reading experience, which I found a little bit slow. I was kind of bored through some of it, but overall, like the ending and how it culminated really got me. So I definitely wanted to try more from her. This cover right off the bat is definitely giving me the guest list vibes by Lucy Foley. So let's go ahead and see what it's about. After years of avoiding one another, Daisy Darker's entire family is assembling for Nana's 80th birthday party in Nana's crumbling Gothic house on a tiny tidal island. Okay, yep, tiny tidal island. That's very similar to the guest list. They're finally back together one last time and when the tide comes in, they will be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. Family arrives, each of them harboring secrets. Yes, definitely. Then at the stroke of midnight, as a storm rages, Nana is found dead. An hour later, the next family member follows. Trapped on an island where someone is killing them one by one, the Darkers must reckon with their present mystery as well as their past secrets before the tide goes out and all is revealed. Yes, so I'm absolutely getting the guest list vibes from Lucy Foley, but then of course the and then there were none trope as well. And I'm excited to see what Alice Feeney does with this. I didn't love the guest list and I'm a little bit wary of stories like this because in my experience they seem to have a lot of characters and those characters are kind of all thrown at you and you never get to spend a lot of time with any particular character and as a character driven reader that can be a little bit difficult for me as I want that connection but I recently read An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina and it was an isolation thriller where there were several characters that you had to keep track of and it was a similar thing but I had a lot of fun with that book so even though there wasn't an emotional connection to it it was a good time and I think I'm just going to go into this one expecting that same thing and not really expecting more and we'll see if it actually you know blows me away. So I'm willing to give Alice Feeney the benefit of the doubt and to see what she does with this. Then I have The Wilder Women by Ruth Emmy Lang. Now I have never read anything by Ruth Emmy Lang but I was first drawn in by the cover and then the synopsis because this sounds like it's going to be magical and also beautiful and possibly poignant at the same time. Five years ago Nora Wilder disappeared. The older of her two daughters Zadie should have seen it coming because she can literally see things coming but not even her psychic abilities were able to prevent their mother from vanishing one morning. Zadie's estranged younger sister, Finn, can't see into the future, but she has an uncannily good memory. So good that she remembers not only her own memories, but the echoes of memories other people have left behind. On the afternoon of her graduation party, Finn is seized by an echo, more powerful than anything she's experienced before. When Finn wakes up alone in an aviary with no idea of how she got there, she realizes who the memory belongs to, Nora. Now it's up to Finn to convince her sister that not only is their mom still out there, but that she wants to be found. So it sounds like it's going to be these two sisters going on a journey to find their mother and there are definitely some like magical elements thrown in. So I feel like this is going to be beautiful and probably a solid like family drama with complex sister dynamics. So definitely excited about this one. All right, y'all, that is it. I promise no more books are going to be shown in this vlog. I am dreading having to do a book haul at the end of November because I also have a huge book outlet order coming. Oh, that book haul is going to be lengthy. Aside from that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog here. I have finished The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and I have started the next book for the vlog that I'm doing. It's called the Replacement Wife by Darby Kane, but I'm not really going to get into my feelings or thoughts about them just because I will be doing a vlog style wrap up for them. So it's not going to be like a standard reading vlog. It's literally only going to be updates, but because I'm going to be doing that vlog style wrap up, I don't really want to include that into an actual reading vlog. So even though tomorrow is supposed to be the official end of this vlog, this vlog is already getting very, very long. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. So I will catch you guys in the next vlog. Bye.